Have you been struggling with painting white areas in watercolor? Because today I want to show you that white doesn't need to look flat and lifeless. It is possible to make white animals like this penguin look colorful and interesting. Using just five different paint colors, I'm going to take you step by step through my process for painting the light colored belly and feet on this rock hopper penguin. All right, I'm just using five different paint colors for this painting. So I have Alizarin Crimson, Yellow Ochre by Holbein, Buff Titanium by Daniel Smith, and if you don't have this color, just Yellow Ochre will work fine. And then for the bright yellow on top of the penguin's head, I'm using this Gamboge Nova by Holbein. And then for my black, I'm using Indigo, one of my very favorite essential colors by Daniel Smith. Flower palette here. Today I'm using my Gray Matters brushes by Richeson. So I'm gonna wet the whole belly first. We're just gonna do this guy's little belly. Using clean water, I'm just carefully painting in the entire area. So once it's glistening and evenly wet all over that area, I'm gonna take the buff titanium and start dropping that in. Just kind of dabbing the tip of my brush and swiping it upward. The next area that's also light is the, the inside of these wings, which are in shadow, but they're still white or light patches in the shadow. And so I'm gonna do the same thing by starting with the wet and wet technique, just laying down some water in that shape. And in this case, they're a little bit more pink in color. So I'm taking a little bit of my alizarin crimson and just blocking that in, dabbing it in. And we'll really quickly paint the other wing. I'm gonna to switch to my size six round brush for the little feet. And again, take clean water, paint inside that entire area. Once again, we're just making the paper glossy, a little bit of pink inside of these feet. Just little hints of it though. And then in the toes, I see a little hint of blue. And I think my indigo is gonna be the perfect color for that. So I'm just painting very carefully along the edge of the foot. All right, we'll come around to this other little foot. There's some wrinkles in there we wanna get in. In this area, just between the belly and the feet, there is a shadow. I'm gonna take pretty much pure indigo and paint these dark feathers down here. I think that's a good color for the shadow right here. Watering that down and then grabbing a little more yellow ochre and just kind of blending that edge that I just painted. Remember that white is hardly ever going to be pure white in a painting. And in the case of this little guy's belly, I see lots of tan, even some hints of blue in the belly. And so that's really gonna help it look realistic rather than flat and boring, is if you get those color variations within the white and also the texture. Now I chose cold pressed paper because it has a little bit of tooth to it, has a little bit of roughness. And so I can easily use the what's called the dry brush technique, which is where you can scrape your brush along the surface. I'm holding it at an angle here, and the brush is just catching along the surface, sort of missing areas of the paper, leaving them highlighted, really doing the work of creating that texture and detail for us. So I'm very roughly scrubbing my brush along the surface. Where I want it to look more pigmented, I will go ahead and paint all the grooves in, inside of that area. But if I want to leave the highlights, I just scrape my brush along the surface and that works really well for getting that texture. All right, I'm taking some very watered down indigo and starting to paint in some of those cool shadows in the white that I was telling you about. Again, using my dry brush method just to avoid some of the paper and form highlights for us. Adding some of that on the other side. And once again, I'm just scraping my brush. That was a little dark. Along the surface of the paper. I actually really like those kind of brushy, washy edges that are forming. Bit of a darker section right here on the belly. And don't be afraid to go even a little more vibrant in your painting than the photograph shows. People are drawn to color and if you exaggerate the colors a little bit, I don't think it'll hurt your painting. I think it'll look quite lovely. So I'm really playing up the yellow here in the belly. And it offers a nice contrast in color to 
the indigo that I'm adding towards the top. But to balance it out, I'm bringing some of that down along the shadow edge here, along the wing. And I see a little bit of a reflection of the pink and on the other side of the wing in the side of his belly here. So I'm indicating with a little bit of my alizarin, sort of that reflected light inside of that shadow. And I see a little of that on the other side too. And it might be just um, the reflection of the color of the rocks around him, kind of bouncing off the white of his belly. But that's another thing that really will affect what color you'll see within the whites of any white thing. What's around it? In this case, the penguin has these pinkish, yellowish rocks around him, which I think his belly is picking up some of that color. So it's important to observe that in your reference photo when you're trying to decide what colors to look for in the white, what colors to pick for your painting, all of that. It's very dependent on the thing's environment. So we've got tons of color in that white now. He's looking pretty good. And we may have to go darker once we start adding the black. You'll see it's, it looks bright right now, but the black's really gonna tone that down once we add it in. If you want to see more about painting animals in watercolor, check out these other videos. Also, don't forget to grab my free guide on watercolor basics. I'll be sure to include a link to that in the description below this video. Thanks for watching.